Hey, welcome. It's been a busy April for me, but nevertheless, spring is here, sun's coming out, I'm spending more time outside, the sun is stronger, so I figured now would be a good time to chat through some sunscreens I've tried in the past. Um, I have tried quite a few. I generally don't like spending a lot of money on sunscreen personally just because I know that it's something that I have to go through pretty often. It's not going to be something that lasts a long time for me. So for that reason, I've definitely geared towards a lot of Asian beauty brands because they have a lot of really, really nice sunscreens out there for cheaper. So I'm just going to kind of chat through my experience with a lot of them and they can be pretty similar. Um, but let's try and break it down a little. I think it's worth mentioning that my skin is sensitive and combo and despite that I don't really have any really like ingredient intolerances to anything in sunscreen so whether it's physical, chemical, mineral, I just slap it on and usually it works for me. What I really judge sunscreens on are the texture and finish and how much I like the application process and how likely I am going to enjoy also reapplying the sunscreen. These are all things that kind of make or break what a good sunscreen is for me. First off, I will start off with the non-Asian beauty one, which is the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. It is SPF 40. Uh, PA++++, plus plus plus, three pluses, water and sweat resistant. Uh, Supergroup I feel like has kind of built a really nice reputation as far as SPF products go in the Western market. This is kind of like one of the first brands I think of as far as sunscreen other than like banana boat. But as far as like nice formulations for the face, Supergroup has you covered. They have a lot of like this one, the unseen sunscreen happens to be the more like mattifying one, but then they have a glowy one, a tinted one, yada, 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 uh, accessible at Sephora, cruelty free, reef safe, vegan, all these great things. So if it works for you, it works for you. Awesome. It is fairly expensive as far as things go, but I could see Supergoop being a brand that is worth it because at the end of the day, wearing sunscreen is pretty important. Uh, so if there's one that you know, works for you even if it costs a little bit more money. Like sunscreen is the most important step in your skincare, so maybe it's worth investing in. I, for one, um, happen to have found things that I like for cheaper, so I'm very grateful for that. In any case, this has a very light sunscreen scent. It, I think they've gone, done a good job of making it not too strong and in your face, but nevertheless, it definitely does smell like sunscreen. The Unseen Sunscreen is clear and it's got that very, very silicone-y, it feels just like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer from back in the day. Uh, super smooth finish, feels like almost nothing, it's like invisible going on. The thing that I like most, that I like most about this formula is that I find it super easy to like reapply sunscreen throughout the day with this one it, because it's like so thin and it doesn't really disturb makeup underneath that I think is one of its biggest powers is that like it can it just like goes on and feels like nothing and it's not like too liquidy so it's not gonna like break down anything you have on your face it's perfect for re reapplying throughout the day as well as just being a good base sunscreen I personally am not likely to repurchase just because it kind of costs a lot, you know, that's all. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the Etude House Sun Prize Mild Airy Finish Sunscreen. And I first tried this, I want to say in like 2018 or so, maybe before that, but it was a different formulation and a different package before. It was upside down in a tube shaped like this and you can squeeze it out. The formula was a little bit thicker than this current formula. Um, it really just felt like a lotion and it was one of my favorite sunscreens. I wish I had more bottles of it. It was super down the middle of the road. It didn't leave you feeling matte and it didn't leave you feeling dewy or anything. It was not like super wet in texture. It just had a very satin finish, felt like a lotion, sunscreen packed in, a hint of white cast just like this one, this current formulation does have now, but white cast doesn't really bother me because my skin is fairly light and the white cast is like 
it's not bad at all, but I will mention that it has a, a hint. Um, Anyways, big fan of the old formula, have been wanting to like repurchase for years. So I got around to trying this new bottle. I'm a huge fan of this packaging. It's got this little squeezy dropper and it's super secure. Nothing ever spills out. Uh, easy to work with. It is this very uh, white and thin, super, super liquidy finish. It kind of disappears pretty quickly, but um, maybe it'll show up on camera it does end up having a hint of cast to it but again it spreads out easily blends in pretty easily but it does this like liquid to powder if you ever tried like a cream to powder product i feel like those used to be all the rage it does that sort of thing where it kind of has this powdery dusty finish to it and to me it kind of feels like there is this tangible barrier I can feel all over my face. It leaves a bit of a film, which I personally am not a fan of at all. I find it to be a hint drying feeling even. Uh, so I'm not huge on this current formulation. It's not so offensive that I won't use it up. I certainly can. Um, it's a good sunscreen nevertheless but it's not my ideal by any means. However, I could see it working for a lot of people. Um, this does have quite a strong scent. It smells like sunscreen that they tried to cover up with like a baby powder sort of smell. It's not that bad. It's not like sunscreen usually smells good anyways, right? I will say though that this current formula is really, really similar to me. Um, to my experience with the Anessa Perfect UV Sunscreen Skincare Milk, which is SPF 50, PA 4 pluses. Um, but that one came in a very similar bottle to this. It's like that really thin, liquidy, white um, texture. So like it came out of a tiny bottle like this, a tiny opening. Um, but yeah, super similar in formulation, uh, super thin on the face, dries down to that like powdery matte finish, which I know like Anessa and that finish that they provide is very, very popular amongst a lot of people. I think if you're oily, having that like matte finish in the summer will feel really nice as a base to start your day with. Uh, so if that was something that you really liked, I would recommend this current iteration of the Sun Prize Mild Airy Finish as a potential dupe it's just not my cup of tea but i could see it being again someone else's holy grail out there potentially see sunscreen is so like finicky okay and then moving on to my current favorite i have the nivea uv super water 50 gel this is spf 50 pa3 pluses and i just really like the texture and finish and application of this all around. It's kind of my favorite right now. Um, I love that it's got this like pump at the top, but it's only got that because I have the bigger size. It's 140 grams here, but this formula is very plush and gel-like. I like to describe it as a pudding. It's kind of got a little bit more weight to it. As you can see, there's like a little mound right there. But anyways, it comes out as a off-white cream color and then it turns clearer pretty instantly. It feels quite liquidy, plush, gel-like. And then it spreads out throughout the face really, really easily. And as you're kind of spreading, it dries down, kind of leaves this like glassy, luminous finish. And it's not mattifying by any means um, at the end if anything it might leave you looking a little bit dewy ish but I wouldn't call this like moisturizing by any means it's just that the finish leaves your skin looking a little shiny I feel like makeup sits on top of it really well it dries down super super thin um, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but it has no scent and I'm just a really big fan of this. Easy to work with, hits all my boxes. I have also tried a earlier iteration, which was the Nivea Sun Water Gel, which was SPF 35, PA3 pluses, which I found to be 
super, super similar to this current formulation, just a hint thicker, if anything, but basically applied and felt the same. But this one is that I have now is SPF 50. So I'm a fan of that. And um, yeah, it's good. I really like Nivea sunscreens. Similar to Nivea sunscreens is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Gel. This one is like a holy grail sunscreen for a lot of people. It's SPF 50, PA4 pluses. And I find the Biore formula to be really, really similar to the Nivea one. I've tried two years of the Biore formulations. I think 2019 and 2020, maybe 2020, 2021. In any case, they're all super similar. I think one of the years had these tiny, tiny like beads of sunscreen formulation, sunscreen chemical that would kind of like, you know, they were really soft, really subtle. Like it was not anything too noticeable, but they existed. Um, and then one of the, I think the newer formulation I had was more like the Nivea where it was just a very like smooth, one well, homogeneous texture that's what i'm trying to think of um but in any case it like the navia has no scent comes out like pudding like yogurt like ish it was a little bit thinner and more waterier than the nivea one um that's the best I can describe it. I think if you like one of these, you'll like the other. So if you can find one for cheaper, I would say go for it. Not a really huge difference I can describe, just having tried both. I slightly like the Nivea one better. It's just like a hint smoother, a hint more gel-like going on, which appeals to me. But again, they're super duper similar. And I believe in a very similar price range too. The Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Gel SPF 50 PA4 Pluses is the last one I have to talk about. And this one is, I would put this in a similar category to the Nivea and the Biore, but the formulation is not quite as plush like the other two I might describe as pudding like, whereas the Skin Aqua one was more liquidy, more watery for sure spreads out feeling a little bit thinner um, just like doesn't have as much like plushness to the formulation feels a little bit more bare bones minimalist if that makes any sense at all works really well i know it's one of the cheaper um, of the japanese sunscreen lineup uh, goes on really easily feels like pretty much nothing on um, like these other two, I didn't feel super inclined to reach for it just cause I had like, I just like this one a little bit better. That's all. And they're in a similar enough price range that I've kind of just stuck with this. Uh, I don't have anything revolutionary to say about the skin aqua one, but it's solid and you know it feels thin and cosmetically elegant and it's very affordable so you know if you're shopping around looking for a sunscreen i think biore nivea or skin aqua are all pretty worth the try i think the other ones i've mentioned today um you know you'll be able to tell if they work for you or not or maybe they're worth a try in any case, once I run out of this, I might be so inclined to try some other ones, but I'm pretty happy with this here. Um, let me know if you have any favorites, any like 10 to $15 recommendations. Maybe next year I'll try some new ones. But yeah, sunscreen is great. Make sure to wear it every day, especially if you're going in the sun. And hope this was helpful.